one Messiah. But the name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you feel the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Springs when you can drink out of them. That's right. 
I wouldn't recommend it anymore. <laughs> it's still there. That really? Yeah. And drink out of it. I remember that along the journey of life, there would be something called the world's largest ball of yarn. Yeah. Yeah. And you would go see it. The biggest alligator around and you look over there and he's got trees growing out his back. He's been dead so long, but you didn't care. <laughs> if you were a kid, and that was cool. It's the journey in life that defines yeah. you. It's the journey in life that God grows you, that leads you. Yes, uh -huh. heaven is going to be our home or a great ministry. God has shown us to get there. But how do we get there? It's that destiny uh -huh. walk along the way. as you move across. And there are several in here that are destined for greatness. But how do you get there? How do you get there? God. He leads you. You follow the leading of God. Amen. And that's not the end of my sermon, okay? It's a freebie. You can have that one. Let's go ahead and pull our scripture up. Oh, yes. Something Amen. mighty is going to happen. Amen. 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 I would say hold on to your seat, but I want you to get up and jump and feel it. Right. 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 We worship Him in truth. We worship Him in spirit and in truth. We worship this God that did all this and loved us so much that He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Messiah. Yeah, and they're like, 
Because they didn't want to get involved in that kind of stuff, did they? They were all set to come persecute the church here. They're ready to drag people out, to kill people, to do all these kind of things. And, and Jesus had a different thing in mind. Amen. And Saul rose from the earth, and when, he's, when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. Yes. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. He thought, Hey, something good's coming. Well, it was, buddy. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire of the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayed. Praying, right? Isn't that cool? Amen. That's Paul's prayer. And he said in a vision, a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. And Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to thy saints at Jerusalem. So he's trying to get out of the name. Yeah. And here he had authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on the name. So he got his papers in order. He's going to do his thing. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Amen. We're just laying some groundwork here. We're fixing to get back. Y'all going to have to jump a minute. So. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, and arose, and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. Amen. 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 That he is the Son of God. Paul, who was Saul, he had went and heard about Christianity. He was a Pharisee's Pharisee. Do you know what that means? He was way up there yeah. in the Jewish church. He was way up there. He could recite his lineage all the way back to Abraham. All the way back to Abraham. He could do all those kind of things. And he said, I'm going to end this Christianity now. I'm going to take care of business. I'm going to Damascus. And I'm going to set my path on my road. And I'm going down there. I've got my books. I've got my papers. I've got everything in order for me to drag them out of their houses, to persecute them, to put them in prison, to kill them, to beat them, whatever it may take to end this thing. I'm going to end it now. I'm going to end it now. So he got there and he thought in his mind, and this is what I want some people to think in here, that God told me, that what we need to, he's thinking in his mind, I'm going down this path to do this thing. But Jesus, your Messiah, said, we got something else in mind. We've got another plan for you and your life. He thought that life had been laid out for him. He had been to school. He had been to synagogues. He had been through training. He knew that this was the way that he should go in his mind. But as he started down that road of life, something happened to him along the way. Destiny knocked. Amen. In the form of Jesus Christ. Amen. And as it came out, he said, uh-oh, his eyes were not. And for three days, this great man, this Pharisee of Pharisees, this person that had all these papers lined up, this guy that could drag people out, couldn't see a thing. He was walking in blindness. He was still walking, wasn't he? Because he heard the call of Jesus. Now he is... Destiny in life has changed in there. No longer is he going this way, he's doing this. We don't know what God's path is for us or how to get there. God was taking him to this road, to this place.
place called Straight so that he could get out there and start this great ministry. Amen. He didn't know that. He didn't start that way. He started another way. He started a way he thought to do right. But God said, uh huh. I know something better. So for three days, he's wandering around trying to figure out what's going on. He's not eating. He's not drinking. He can't do anything. And then Ananias gets the call. I'm yeah. trying to get that call. <laughs> this is God. Uh, I need you to go down and talk to Paul. I need you to talk to him and tell him that he has a work. Stop messing with my people. Let the scales fall from your eyes. You'll be straight. And he's like, Send somebody. Have you heard what this? How many people start to reason with God when He told you to do something? Uh -huh. yeah. God, have you heard what this man said? Amen. He's going to kill us. Amen. Uh, Christian, yeah. He's after me. He's got papers. God said, "What did God say? Well, I got you. God's got you back. He's got you. If He's calling you to do something." And he's sending you in a certain situation. He's not going to leave you hanging out there. Right. If you know it's God, and sometimes we get in flesh and mess up. Right. But if you know it's God, you're not going to fail. No matter what you do or where you go, if you see that destiny or feel that call of the Lord, you're going to make it. I don't know how. We don't know how. But along life's way, that big ball of yarn or something's going to change our life, change our mind. The person that... Baby got healed. Maybe that's a destiny changer for somebody whose baby's in the hospital and don't know about it. Right? But along the way, he's received this from Jesus, and then he received his sight. Right? So two people are affected in this first part of my sermon. Two people are affected. Look at it from both perspectives. From Paul, who was sitting there and he's going, "I'm going to be the man. I'm going to be the man. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be the one to end this." Because he thought he was doing the right thing. He didn't. He wasn't. Being mean per se, he was ending something that he felt was destroying the Jewish church. He was going to end that thing. So God said, "Uh, uh blindness." So he's blind, wandering around for three days. But he heard God's voice, and he's ready to get started. But Ananias doesn't know that. All Ananias knows is that I got to go. This guy that's going to kill me. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. God. Uh, God. Uh, 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 and we try to make excuses, don't we? Well, uh, you know, my clothes are in the dryer and I don't have nothing to wear, God. You know, church starts at 7 and it's already 10 till. And by the time I get there, you know, they'll be, you know, and God's going, and that's a bad, I just ask to go pray for the man. Go pray for the man. Sometimes we make these excuses that stop our destiny. Like, it puts a halt on things. It makes you have to wander through the desert a little longer, right? Because, you know, remember as the people were wandering through the desert, the Israelis and things, as they're becoming what God wanted them to become, they got up to a certain point and they had to go back. Everybody knows that story. They had to go back out into the desert. Why? Because God was no longer teaching them to be a family. He was teaching them to be a nation. There was greatness in the call that they had. They just didn't know it. They started as a family going into Egypt. They came out as a nation. So yes. until they were right to go into the promised land, they had to wander in the desert. That's we don't right. want to wander in the desert, right? We don't want to do those kind of things. So that's what we, the first part is the Paul thing. Remember, that, that's what we want to kind of keep in our mind, right? Paul and Ananias, those two things. Now the next thing is we're going to talk a little bit about Peter. You don't know Peter? Yes, they do. you know Peter? Yes. I, I like Peter. I'm just going to read a couple real quick ones here, and then we'll go get on with it. And Peter knocked at the door of the gate. A damsel came to hearken, named Martha. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened, not the gate, for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed. I've heard that a few times. Sometimes people tell you that just to keep it down. Amen. Sometimes they may really believe it, but other times, they really, you know, I don't want you to be any better than me. So, you know, I want to kind of shut you down a little bit. When really, a rising tide lifts all boats. So if everybody 
helps each other out. We're all going together. Right. Just because Amen. it might be my time to preach doesn't mean it's not going to be your time next week. Right. Just because God's call right now is on me or on somebody else doesn't mean it's not on you. Right. We're all from the same family, right? Amen. We all come up together. I should be happy when the sister or the brother does things. Yeah, no. Amen. Awesome. Amen. It's great. It's awesome. Why? Yeah, I'm proud because they're part of my family, but my time's coming. Amen. Right? Because God being no respecter of person is going to come around to me. And as long as I stay true and stay the course, it's going to happen. Amen. No telling what I'm going to encounter on the way to my destiny, but that's what's going to define who I am. That's going to stretch me. And that's going to pull things out of me that I didn't know about or didn't even know was in there or could, or didn't remember that that needed to be cleansed or clean. It's Amen. going through things. Sometimes you have to yes. go through a battle. So it leads us through the valley yes. of the shadow of death, right? Sometimes you've got to go through things. But yes. keep your eye on Jesus. Because really, He's your true destiny. He's really the end game. The being of Jesus is the end, right? Alright. And He said unto her, Thou art man. I'm going to read that again. And He said unto her, Thou art man. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. I'm telling you. It's Peter. Not really? You don't make up there, little lady. You're, uh, you lost it. Then said they, oh, well, maybe it was an angel. You know, I mean, that's pretty miraculous too, isn't it? Maybe it was an angel. Why couldn't it be Peter? Well, maybe it was an angel. Mm. But Peter continued knocking. I think they were just trying to shut her up. <laughs> maybe it's an angel you saw. Go there and pray somewhere. Yeah. Right? Have you ever been pushed to the corner? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Why? Because you're different. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You lift your voice in church. Oh, yeah. You lifted up your hand. I saw it. <laughs> That's how I worship God. And as long as this needs to be in order, we don't want to be on people, right? right? Especially the babies. Amen. Right? We want to. We want to. Accept them and say, okay, well, you know, as long as you're in order and you're not like crawling all over this sister, you know, knocking her down where she can't worship and things, it's fine. Enjoy God because you don't know what it's like. You don't know what their walk was like up to that point. And maybe they're just happy to be alive. You ever think of that? Well, they're not dignified. Maybe they're just happy to be alive. I mean, God brought me through this. Thing. And yeah, it's amazing. I'm just happy to be alive. Let them be amazed. Yeah. They heard nobody. Yeah. Just praise Him a little bit. It don't matter. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It is. Amen. Yeah. 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 If you get out of order, the pastor will set you down. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Peter continued knocking. When they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Let's, let's, let's hear the whole story. I only put those scriptures up because they pertain to a certain individual in here that I'm going to tell later. And I'm going to draw this together for that person. But for the rest of us, we're going to do the whole picture. Okay, I didn't want to go through all the, the scripture. But basically what happened was Herod killed James by the sword. Killed him. And he saw that the Jewish people were, were like, yeah, you're finally getting rid of them people. So it emboldened him to grab Peter. And they went out and grabbed Peter and they brought him to jail. And they put him in jail and they put 16 guards around him. Yeah. 16 guards in different ranks. Two right beside him. One on each side. And Peter fell asleep. <laughs> Meanwhile, the church is back there praying for him. Amen. God let Peter go. God let Peter go. God let Peter go. God let Peter go. Praying earnestly. Really wanted him out. Amen. He's standing at the gate. No, no, no. They're still praying. We'll get that minute. <laughs> so he's in the innermost part of the jail and he's laying there asleep, right? And then the light of the Lord shines in about him. The angel of the Lord yes. appears unto Peter and he's going to deliver him, right? So he comes up and he says, Peter's light, two guards, Peter. <laughs> God walks, the angel walks up and looks down at him. He goes, get up. You need to get out of here. And kicks him, you know. Gives him a little nudge. Wake up, Peter. You're sleeping too sound. Can anybody here sleep in prison between two guards? 
Yeah. <laughs> Apparently Peter could. Yeah. He was like, the angel woke him up. He said, get up. Put clothes on. Dress yourself. Lace up your sandals. Get out of here. And, and the chains fell from his hands. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. A miraculous, mighty God that can do that. Couldn't he have just thought Peter in another place? Peter had to make the journey from the inner prison to the outer courts because there was some things along his destiny's way that he had to experience, right? Yes, he could. God could have delivered him just like that and he could have been out there because remember when Jesus first started off and they were going to kill him, they were talking about killing him and throwing him down the side of the mountain. He just wasn't there anymore. He was somewhere else. And I'm like, Jesus is gone. He could have did the same thing for Pete. Right. But he had to go through something to stretch him, to build his destiny walk, to give him that direction along the way. So right, so he gets up. He's like, okay, whatever. And he starts getting dressed. Because he don't know at this point whether it's a vision from God or whether it's really happening. It says in there that he, he's not sure. Right? So he's like getting dressed, la, la, la. I guess I'll pinch myself and wake up later or something. I don't know. So he's getting dressed, and as he walks out the door, he starts walking on down past the two guards that were standing beside him. They didn't do nothing. That's kind of odd. I mean, their job is to stop him, right? Then he walks past another group of guards. Remember, there's 16 of them. He passes another group of guards. They're like, and he continues walking. And he passes a third set of guards. Then he walks up to an iron gate that is sitting there closed. It opens on its own. Amen. So Peter walks out. And he's walking down the road and he passes the first street and the angel disappears. And Peter goes, hey, this ain't a dream. I'm awake. God had delivered him from that situation. It didn't end so well for the guards. The next day they were killed. Because they let the prisoner escape. That was the penalty. That's why you know they weren't asleep. Because the penalty for a prisoner escape is dead. So the guards, they didn't end well for them. So we just got to leave that part of there. <laughs> so Peter went out, right? And he starts down and he gets there. And, and remember what the church is doing. What's the church doing? Pray. Earnestly, right? Yes. yes sir. On their knees, crying out to God. God, deliver Peter. Yes. Peter walked down the road. Peter, They're still praying. God, do something. Peter walks up to the door. No, no, no. No, no, no. Sometimes we get in our own way. We get so involved in the prayers. We get in God's way. Believe. Pray and believe. Pray and believe. Pray. Yeah, pray earnestly. But believe that He's going to do it. They believed they were praying. And when their answer showed up at the door, they sent the lady to the door and she looked out there and she went, I know that voice. That's Peter. Because Peter probably had a voice like not many people around there, you know. He is a fisherman. He had a gruff voice. He was rough and ready all the time. Right? That's Peter, huh? Ready, ready to fight. Denied Christ three times. That's Denied right. Jesus three times. But yet he had a call of destiny yes. Yes. in his life. Right. He overcame that. Why? Jesus asked him three times, right? Do you love me, Peter? Do you love me, Peter? Do you love me, Peter? He denied him three times. He said he loved him three times. But God brought him back and gave him that walk. And Peter never turned back. Peter kept going. Peter kept going. Peter kept going. So he's at the gate. He's like, not, not, not. Can I come in? It's cold out here. It's cold. And she said, Ooh, thank God he's been delivered. How many people have had something amazing happen to him? And you want to tell the whole world? And all you get is, oh. right? Just because people don't share in your destiny or don't feel it, don't make it real, don't mean it's not real. That's right. Not everybody's going to believe. Not everybody's going to. Some may be jealous. Some may be other things. Some may doubt. It's just a whole bunch of things. What you have with God is special between you and God. That is your walk, your destiny. Yes, we can share in it together along the way. I am so happy for you in there. But ultimately, it's your baby. That's right. Ultimately, you've got to push it out. 
That's for mamas, not daddies. <laughs> Amen. So Peter's standing at the door and he's going, I gotta get in there, you know, he keeps knocking. And and the the little servant girl comes back and she knows him, she's telling everybody, and like we said, they said, You're you're crazy, you're beside yourself. Something's up. And that ain't Peter. Well, you've just been praying for him half the night. <laughs> Why couldn't it be Peter? Why can't God do anything? Why can't God do everything? What hinders God from doing the things? All things are what? Possible. To who? God. Do you believe? Yes. It is possible. Don't let the world take it from you. It may not be your time right now, but hold on to that destiny. If God has gave it to you, don't let anybody or anything take it from you. We can come in there with you and in the delivery room, I can walk up to you and I can pat you on the shoulder. Guys, never let her grab your hand. Just, just never let a woman that's given birth grab your hand. You'll lose a finger. Trust me. <laughs> Sorry, hand. They bent the bars on the baby. And if she can do that, she needs I can go in there and I can feel your pain. I can hear the equipment beeping. I can tell when another contraction's coming by the sound of the machine or the look on my wife's face. But I can't feel that pain of Destera. You have to push this thing out. You have to get along with God. If nobody else gets in a prayer closet, you have to get along. You have to overcome this thing. I can pray with you. I can intercede with you. I can help you in your ministry. I can do all these things. I can fast with you and for you and all these things. But ultimately, you've got to do it. Amen. You have to. This is between you and God. Amen. This is your faith. This is your walk. This is your life along the way. So Peter, he got through there, right? And finally, he got through to the people. He's like banging on the door. And they're going, that's really not Peter. It's an angel. Peter's going, oh, I think it's me. <laughs> so he kept meeting. And he kept meeting. And they finally let him in. And they want to hear all about it. Peter goes, no, I'm not going to tell you right now. Just go ahead and go out. And let's get everything going and organized and all that. They finally let Peter in. And they finally accepted the fact that, yes, that was Peter. And he's standing there beating on the door. <laughs> hey, that's Peter. Yeah, that's what we've been trying to tell you the whole way. Amen. So let's look at another thing. Jesus. He was fed 5,000 people. Men. The women and children made it about 20,000. Somewhere 15, 20,000. Fed them. Preached to them. They followed him out into a desert. You know the story. They went up, they broke, he broke the fishes and all those kind of things, took it out to everybody, fed the multitudes and went up, and everybody started going home and they went home. And Jesus said, okay, well I'm going to go pray a little more. You disciples, y'all get in the boat and y'all head over to the other shore. They had a destination in mind. Picture that destination. The other shore, there's a village over there. There's a town over there. We're going to that destination. We're going to that destination over there. So they start out rowing, but the wind was against them, and they couldn't get very far. But they got out to about the middle of the lake, and Jesus had been praying. He said, you know, they're, I don't know if they were thinking, how's he going to come? Is he going to get another boat? Whatever. But the Bible says that Jesus decided he's going to go out, and he's going to go to the other side. And he's out there walking across the water. He's walking across the water. And he wouldn't even have said anything to him. He would have went on past, right? And went on to the destination and been on the other side going, hey, I'm on the other side. But he started, it's a ghost! It's a ghost! Yeah. Anybody been around sailors? I'm telling you, sailors are some of the superstitious people you've ever seen. I'm ex-Navy, so I can say that. They are. They really are. But they were hollering, it's a ghost, it's a ghost, it's a ghost. They must have been hollering so loud. Jesus was like, I'm going to go over there and talk to them. And he went over there and he said, walking on the water. He said, it is I. It's me. And Peter said, you know, if, it, if it's you, let me come out. Right? Let me come out to you. Only one to get out of the boat. A lot of people 
get on to Peter for sinking, but he's on one step on the wall. Right. Right. The rest of them's going. Amen. Right? He's the only one to get down to it. Peter. The same Peter we're talking about and then knocking on the door. That Peter. Right? That Peter. So he stepped out. It wasn't so much the destination that Jesus had, but it was what happened along the way. That miracle of him walking on the water, of letting Peter out, walking on the water, of lifting Peter out, your miracle may not ever happen at the destination. It may be on the way. Because that's what you define. That's the definition of you. Is on the way. That's what makes you who you are. Has anybody met Christ along the way in their destination? Has anybody thought, you know, I'm going to go like Paul. And I'm going to do this thing. And I'm going to get out of here. And God says, I'm going to do this thing. i got another plan for you. You think, oh, I got all this made. I'm a big time drug dealer. Or I got all the women I can stand. Or I got all the men that here and there and all this stuff. And I got everybody wrapped around my little bitty finger. And God goes, oh, your time's over. You're fixing to be a preacher. Huh? You don't know where your Bible is. You got one somewhere because Grandma gave it to you. But you really don't know where it is. Maybe it's holding the table leg up. I don't know. I don't know. But then you have to learn, right? And you have to experience this life and this walk along the way. So we're going to talk about one more person. I want y'all to get this in your mind. In your mind's eye. A little old lady coming in. A daughter of Abraham. Been over 18 years. Been over like this. 18 years. You know what? I think I just want to be in the presence of the Lord. Again, God. I want to go to God's house. A daughter of Abraham. You know, I'm just going to keep walking. I'm going to keep coming. Why? Because I just want to be in the presence of God. I want to be in the presence of God. 18 years. You don't think she's asked God to heal her? In those 18 years? A spirit had her. It wasn't even sickness. It was a spirit of infirmity. That's right. So she's back over for 18 years. Right? And she's walking in there. And she's walking in there. And that's why it's so important to come to church. Amen. Amen. Just to be in the presence of God, right? I just want to be in your presence one more time, Lord. Amen. I just want to be in your presence. What made David so, so endured to God? What was it? Desire to be in the presence of the Lord, right? That I just want to be with God. I just want to be with God. No matter what it takes, no matter where. Anybody said that in here? No matter what it takes, where it takes, God. I just, I just want to be there. It, even if I had to sit on the back row and tap my foot. You're just singing. Because I'm so tired from work. But I just want to be in your presence one more time, God. You've done so much for me, God. You've cared for me so much, God. I don't deserve the things. And God goes, you're not me. You're right. You don't deserve it, but I love you enough to give you my son. He deserves it. Right? He, the, the, the creator of the entire universe loved you enough to give you his son. And not only that, give you a calling. Yeah. Do something with the gift that he gave you, right? Yeah. Amen. So here she is for 18 years. And all she's doing is coming to church. She's coming to church for 18 years. She's walking in there, right? Walking. Coming to church. Coming to church. Coming to church. She didn't grab no hem of the garment. That's right. The lady that had the issue of blood, she grabbed the hem of the garment, right? Yeah. She pressed through, grabbed that hem of the garment. And she got her deliverance. She's walking into church. Walking into church. She didn't climb up no tree and get invited to the house for tea. She didn't get in God's face. She's coming to church. Coming to church. There are different ways to God, aren't there? Coming to church. 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 She didn't sit there and she didn't cry out. She didn't cry out. Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. Over and over and over and over again until Jesus came up to him and said, I got this. And laid hands on him and made hope. She's coming to church. I just desire to be in the presence of the Lord. I just want to, I just want to feel something real. You ever just wanted to feel something real? Yeah. Yeah. You ever been like so depressed or so down or, or on something or something and you just want to feel something real? Yeah. I just yeah. want to feel something real. I'm, I'm tired, God, of 
I'm tired of all the, the big fake stuff, and I'm tired of this religion and that religion and this problem. I just want to feel something real. Yeah. Yes. 18 years. 18 years is coming along. And guess what? Jesus just happened to be there that day. On her destiny trip. Yeah. She didn't know the time he's going to be there. She didn't even know he was going to be there. This one. 18 years she pressed. Can you press just a little longer? Yeah. She pressed for 18 years. And she walks in. He rebukes the spirit, raises her up, and she's healed. Wow! Right. Ah, she can stand straight and walk. Amen. After 18 years coming to the same place. 18 years of smiling sometimes, maybe sad sometimes. What if she had said, you know, my back's kind of acting up. I don't think I'm going to go tonight. They got a new preacher there tonight. Somebody I've never heard before. Some, some Jesus. From Nazareth, no less. They hadn't really heard that much about him. I think I'll stay home tonight. I think I'll stay home. No. She said, I just desire just to be in the presence. Just to be in the presence of God. And guess what? She was made whole. Don't let anything come between you and your destiny. Whether you're cranky, whether you're tired, whether your spouse is cranky and tired, no matter what it is, if you're feeling that call, if you're feeling that draw, don't let anything or anybody stand in the way. Right? Because in the end, who are you going to blame? The person that's standing in the way? Yourself. He's gave you every opportunity just like the rest of us did. Amen. He's given you that call. If He's put it in your heart, put it in your life, and you know that you're called to ministry, you're called to works, you're called to sing, or even if you're just called to be in His presence right now, do it. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. But I don't know how to get there. Just get there. That's right. I don't know what to do once I am there. Raise your hand. Yeah. Raise Him a little bit. Do yeah. something. Yeah. God, I don't know how to do this. He'll teach you. Amen. Yeah. He'll teach you. You'll hear the word. Yes. You'll hear the word. <coughs> and from we're hearing that word, you start getting a little bit of hope. That's right. Amen. What Amen. happens when you get a little bit of hope? Amen. Get a whole lot of faith. Amen. Yes. Why? Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. Yes. If you don't have hope, you can't have faith. Yes. Right? You got to start off with hope. I hope that I'm going to make it through this. I hope. Don't ever let anybody steal your hope Amen. and say it's hopeless. Amen. If the dog counts you out, just blow it off and go on. Right. You have an appointed time. If God chooses to heal you, okay. If He chooses not to, okay. I've been there. I know what you, I know what I'm saying. I'm not just just saying that, right? If you're in depression or so hopeless and you feel like there's nothing to do, just reach up and grab God. Though I said in darkness. Rejoice not against me, O oh, my enemies. Amen. Though I sat in darkness, God will give light unto me. He's going to reach down and pull you out of that pit of despair, right? All you got to do is have just a little bit of hope. And if you can just have that little bit of hope, you can have all that faith, right? Because the tangible, the substance part of the faith, hope. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The very evidence. Everything to things not seen. But what happens to faith without works? Uh oh, faith without works is dead. Got to start over, right? You got to do something with the faith in life, right? We got to do things. Understand? So, I know usually we have a shouting, running service after that kind of, which is awesome and stuff. But God wanted me to give Destiny's call to the people. Here tonight, right? Destiny is at the door knocking. Destiny has got to the place like Peter. Ready for that? <coughs> and as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to him. So as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, Peter is, right now, what God told me, instead of Peter, put God knocking. God is at the gate knocking right now. Will you go 
and open that door. Or will you continue praying? God! My ministry needs to grow. He's at the door. Amen. Open the door and walk through. Say, come on in, God. Right? Destiny's call. The things that you experience along the way is what defines you. The walk in your life is what sets you. You may stumble, but what happens when you stumble? The angels pick you up. Yes. The angels pick you up if you stumble. You gotta stumble some, right? You can't be spoiled all your life. You gotta get out and work. Sometimes you gotta get out and work and do things. We're gonna make mistakes. Okay, well, God, I'm never going to make a mistake because I ain't going to try nothing. I'm going to bury my talent in the ground. That don't end well either. Yeah. Don't end well either. you got to try things. Sometimes you make a mistake. It happens. It happens to all of us. But make a mistake trying. Amen. Better than making a mistake not doing anything, right? right? We want to understand. We want to understand that God is on your side. Yes, that yes. Jehovah that we were talking about. Messiah. King of kings and Lord of lords. All that stuff. He's on your side. And He cares about you. He cares when you're hurt. You may think, no, He don't really. But He does. Amen. How could God let me hurt? How could God do this? How could God do that? It's like a puzzle. You're seeing one little piece of the puzzle. Right? The whole picture. How many people have put together those 5,000, 15,000 piece puzzles? My mother used to love to do those things. They would drive me crazy. Does she even want to get the ones that are all meadow and flowers? I want to do the, the kid one. You know, the four pieces that link together. I did my puzzle. But you get, what do you get with it? You get the box and you get the picture. That's right. And you set that up and that is your destination. That is your goal. And you start assembling this thing called life. And you start putting that puzzle together one piece at a time. You find the corners, right? That's the first thing you do. You try to find the corners and you try to find the straight lines and you try to figure out the rest of the stuff. Unless you really want to be creative and start from the inside out. <laughs> I've seen people do that. But that's your life, right? Put your life that way. Life is set up there on the wall. And we're looking, we're going towards that life. So we start putting life together, piece by piece. Sometimes it don't fit. Yeah. Sometimes we try to make it fit. Yeah. Oh. Close enough, right? Start beating on it, bumping on it. But it ain't, it ain't right. It ain't, that's not where it goes. But God, He was perfect for me. God, she's so beautiful. Beauty face. You get tired of it after a while. When the attitude kicks in, and it's like, man, I gotta spend another hundred and fifty dollars on a dress today. I just did that yesterday. And she going, you better pull out the plastic. <laughs> or he's going, look at this eight pack, twelve pack. And you go, Ooh, after a while, it kind of becomes like flat. <laughs> it's just, it's just. Life. Sometimes it don't fit. Sometimes it doesn't. Don't force the puzzle piece in. Pick it up from the box. And keep working on it. Keep working until the inevitable conclusion. Because when you build that, or when you reach your destination, you're going to step back and look and go, I did that? Wow. Amen. And then the next person says, hey! I'm going to build a puzzle. And you go, ooh, that's kind of hard, but I hate it. And your destiny is calling tonight. Destiny is calling tonight. How will you embrace that? Will you give up and say, I, I just don't know what to do anymore. I'm done. I, I'm tired. I just, I've been trying everything I can try, God. I used just about every piece in the box. Maybe it fell on the floor. Look, do something. Try something different, right? Amen. Try something different. Destiny is not right now. 